talk about a number of things during this art session. And the first thing that I'm going to talk about is if you are not yet a good freehand drawer and want to make a guiding shape for you to work with, then a way to do that is for you to use tracing paper and graphite paper. So we're going to go through the methods of using tracing paper and graphite paper. I think what I'm going to do first is print this a little larger. So this is the default shape so you can see all the different images that are located in here. I just printed the train a little larger so that I have a bit larger thing to draw with. Felix is going to get bored in a second and go back over onto his tower. All right, so the raw image is at Pexels, or Pixabay, sorry. There is another site called Pexels that you can use too, but this one happens to be from Pixabay. And then I just printed it out a little larger so I get a better view of the train engine and the coal car. But you guys can draw or paint whatever you want to, and you can just watch and learn some of the techniques I'm using so that you can see how these techniques work. All right, so step one. Step one is about... to balance too many things at once. All right, so step one, I'm going to show you how to use graphite paper, which looks like this, and tracing paper, which looks like this. All right, so the purpose of this part is if you are not good at drawing freehand and you want some sort of a freehand model to work with on your watercolor paper or drawing pad or whatever you're working on. It's a good technique to use and sometimes you can use it just for a piece of your drawing. If you're doing a drawing that includes all sorts of different things and has an elephant in it and you are not good at drawing elephants, you could draw the rest of it freehand and then just trace on an elephant so that you get the elephant part right to start with. And many people use graphite paper and tracing paper as a starting way to learn freehand, and some people just keep using graphite paper and tracing paper. It's up to you as an artist. So the thought here is that this is a three-part process. So step one is the tracing paper part. And you can get tracing paper at Michael's or Amazon or Joblot or all sorts of other places. And all tracing paper is is very thin paper that you can see through. So if we put that down, you can see right through it. It doesn't have to be anything special. If you have any sort of thin paper around the house, all that matters is that it's thin and that you can see through it because its only purpose is to be able to draw a shape onto the tracing paper. You could just draw right on your original drawing if you want to. I tend to like to keep the original drawing uh, mark free so that you can use it for other projects. And that way you keep the tracing paper and you can use the tracing paper later for uh, doing the same sort of project over and over again. So the way to use tracing paper is to tape the tracing paper to the paper so that while you're drawing things, the tracing paper doesn't move around so it makes a nice fresh image. And I want to put this at the center of the tracing paper. So got some tape from the snaily. Sort of tape it on the corners here. So I keep a file folder of the various things I have traced in the past, and there are definitely times that I want to go back and work on the same image again. Well, probably because I can trace things that I tend to be interested in. All right. So tracing paper, sharp pencil, uh, pencil sharpener. I have one over there in case I run into problems. I'm going to do this a little to the side because I have to sit on the side based on where the tripod is, which is right there. So I'm sort of sitting around the tripod. I need to get some sort of a tripod that hangs from the ceiling so that I can do these things without the tripod right in my center area of working. 
we can move some of these things a little more out of the way. Here we go. All right, so now I'm going to trace the train. So you're not necessarily trying to get every single last detail here in general, because you'll still have this paper as a model when you're doing your actual work. It's more to give you a general sense of the location of the shapes in relationship to each other. So that you get the perspective right, and you get the size right, and all those other kinds of things. And also I'm going fairly fast because you don't want to sit here for a long time watching me trace. This is more to give you a general sense of how the process works than to be a watch Lisa trace things for a long, long time. So we have a bell. We have the smokestack. The smoke comes out. front of the train. So I'm not going to put in all the tiny little details. I'll just give you a general sense of where things are so that when we do the next stage we have everything in place. The wheels. The body, the larger wheels. Alright. And there's this little design here. the train part or the engine part. I did have model trains when I was young and sadly my parents sold them when I went off to college. <laughs> Still a sad memory because I really enjoyed those trains. I could of course buy new trains now that I'm an adult but there's just nowhere to put them right now. <laughs> House is Full of stuff. All right. All right. That's enough to get started. So, certainly, if you were doing a very important project where you wanted every single last detail, then you could do that. You could go through every line extremely carefully. You could use the eraser to erase where you didn't get a line quite right. But in general, the idea here is to show you how tracing paper works. Let me get my screen back in case anyone's asking me questions. Oh, hey John. Oh, there are people asking questions. All right, so let me just hit like to a few of these. Hey John, good to see you. I got my initial train image at pixabay.com. Pixabay.com is a site which has lots of free images you can use. There we go. Yep, so this image with all the different pieces and everything is at pixabay.com, which is P-I-X-A-B-A-Y.com. They have all sorts of different kinds of cool images. This happens to be a train image that I wanted to draw. Or paint or portray. Well, all sorts of things. <laughs> Alright, so you could draw this freehand, but we're just showing you different techniques here so that you can learn different skills. So when if you want to trace it and use graphite paper, then with the tracing paper, what we were doing is we were tracing it. And if I hold this up a little with my hand, you can see how now the image is on this thin paper. So I will disconnect the tape from here. 
So now I can put this in my file folder and I can use this over and over again every time I want to work on a train image to be able to transfer that onto a piece of paper. And if you turn this over, you could put it in both directions. And I think I'll actually do that, is do it in this direction. Because it's since it's see-through, you can see it from both sides and you could use it in both directions. So that's another cool benefit of tracing paper. All right, so step one with using tracing paper is to make the tracing, and that's what we've done. Step two is going to be to use the graphite paper, which is this black stuff, to transfer that image onto a piece of watercolor paper or sketch pad paper or drawing paper or whatever we're actually want to do our artwork with. So graphite paper can be found at Amazon or Michaels or Joblot or all sorts of different places. And all graphite paper is, is a piece of paper which is plain on one side and coated with graphite, which is in essence pe pencil stuff. <laughs> It's coated with pencil stuff on the other side. So what we're going to do is we're going to put our piece of tracing paper down, put the graphite down, and then put it on a blank piece of paper. And then we're going to trace that design. And we could trace it with anything. We could trace it with our fingernail, or we could trace it with a pencil, or a stylus, or anything else. The point isn't that we're drawing and it's somehow magically going through to the paper. The point is that we're pushing down, and when we push down on the graphite paper, it pushes this graphite off onto the destination paper and leaves the design here. And that way it's the exact duplicate of what we see here. Instead of having to draw it freehand and try to draw that and get all those shapes in the right places, we trace this on here. It pushes through the graphite paper and gets onto our destination paper, which is what we want to work with. So let's see this in action. Let me just find a piece of watercolor paper. Because I'm going to be doing watercolors, but you could do this with you know, any kind of paper, sketch paper or so on. All right, so what I'm going to be doing this with is an inexpensive Bristol paper, which is good for charcoal and watercolor and crayon and all sorts of other kinds of things. Again, you can find this pretty much anywhere. So this is a piece of watercolor paper. Happens to be a hundred pounds, but you can use whatever works well for you. So we're going to make a sandwich here with watercolor paper, graphite paper, and tracing paper. And we're going to keep each layer to each other so that they don't slide while we're doing this drawing. So that way everything stays where it's supposed to be. So I'll tape graphite paper to the watercolor paper and then I will tape the tracing paper about in the center of the graphic paper <laughs> makes it a little challenging. So I'll make a little mark over here just to make sure everything is in the right place. Yep, and my mark went through to the paper so I know that everything is lined up correctly and it's on the right side. There is a front and a back to graphite paper so it's always good to do a little test before you start drawing whole hog to make sure that it's going to lay down the marks and you don't have to start it all over again. All right, here is uh, Felix coming back to visit us again. Hello, Felix. It's good that they visit us now when we don't have wet paint for them to stick in and put little cat footsteps all over the place. Yep, go back to your tower, sweetie. All right, so Felix is observing us from his tower, which is good. Alright, so what I'm going to do now is trace, and again, I'm going to tilt it a little so that I can do this around the edge of the tripod. It's a good idea when you are tracing something like this to start at one end and to work your way to the other end, because this stuff on the page is already pencil. 
and I'm going to trace over it with pencil. And again, it doesn't matter that it's pencil because any pressure will pass it through to here. It's just easier for me to hold a pencil than to try to do it with a screwdriver or something else like that. So since I'm drawing with pencil on pencil, it'll be hard to see what I have traced and what I haven't traced. So it's good to start on one end and to work your way to the other, whichever path you like to choose. So we're going to start over here and go down. And we have the model right there, so we have a object we can look at if we have questions about how we traced something. Wheel, the bottom of the train, another wheel, and then this, and then it's got this little ridge. one hand, it's really cool to think of these trains chugging around everywhere, and they do still have a couple of these old-style trains left in operation for you to go see what they're like, and it's romantic and all those other kinds of things. You think of murder on the Orient Express and Harry Potter and those kinds of things. On the other hand, these things were belching smoke everywhere they went, and that's, you know, the classic image. You think of them going around belching smoke in the air. So you had all these pristine farms and lands and everything else and then this thing chugging through belching black smoke and of course you know I'm sure most of us know about the horrors of the children who were forced to work in the coal mines and got deadly lung diseases so there is good and not so good in this it'd be good to have these kinds of trains come back in a way that did not involve coal <laughs> and did not involve deadly lung diseases for people. There's a balance in life. But at the time, they were a pretty nifty thing. So that people could travel quickly and easily, get where they needed to go, it was super fast compared with having to walk somewhere. over here at the back part of the engine. The train set I had was not a steam engine train set, it was a more modern style train set. And I had a whole little town set up with little houses and little trees. It was lots of fun. My little train to go around in circles. Nowadays people just get train simulators on their computers and play with their computers which I suppose gives you lots more options for what kind of trains you have and train cars. You know, it used to be <laughs> very exciting when I could afford to get a new train car to add to my collection. Nowadays you just click and you can download a whole new set of train cars. But on the other hand, you can actually play them without having to have an entire basement to set them up. So again, you can see that it is not about getting every single last detail on there because we're going to be doing our own work uh, later when we're doing the art, but it gives you a general sense of the shapes. And when you've got the tracing the graphite part down, you want to peer around your tape at the source image that you see in there and make sure you've got all the lines, because once you disconnect this, it would be really hard to try to reconnect it in exactly the right space. So what I'm going to do 
Let's take off one of the pieces of tape. One. And lift that. All right, so I think I got all of the main parts there. All right, so I'll disconnect the rest of it. All right, so now I have a piece of watercolor tape with the basics of my image on it. I also still have, I can gently pry this off. All right, so I still have a piece of graphite paper. This paper can be used lots and lots of times because while I did use it to draw the little lines for the train, there's still all this other graphite on here that hasn't been used yet. And I could use this for doing shapes over and over again. And it'll, it would be quite a while before I used it so much that it would become unusable for new projects. So you can keep using and using graphite paper. And that, oops, sorry. That saves you some money. The tracing paper part. Just, ah, get the tape off my fingers. Alright, so the tracing paper, I could use it again for this train image. So I will put this in a file folder, so I'll always have this train image available for me to use. And also you can see that there's blank space around the edges, so if I wanted to use it for something smaller, like, I don't know, a little train sign or something else like that, I could do those in different areas, because when I put this down, I would just trace the part I want. And then if I had a train sign, then I could do it there, and I could put the train sign up there and add it there. So you can use tracing paper and fill all the different areas in, but I wouldn't try to do something else on top of this train because that would get really confusing to be able to manage them. All right, so this is going to go in the file folder with my other trace shapes and be able to work with that. All right, so to summarize how to use tracing paper and graphite paper, you want a piece of tracing paper, a piece of graphite paper, you trace the image with the tracing paper so you have a starting point and then you put that down on top of the graphite paper and you go over it again and that transfers that image that you have using the graphite paper down to your destination surface. And now you can start working with a having a guidelines in there, sort of like your own coloring book. So you don't have to trace images if you don't want to. But it's a useful tool, and if you have someone in the house who is not good at freehand drawing but wants a more accurate image, then the people in the house who are good at tracing can make the starting image for the other person, and then the other person could use this as their starting point and make a piece of art about it. So it helps uh, multi-person households be able to work on projects together. So ask if you have any questions at all about how to use tracing paper and graphite paper to get started with a project.